One of my favorite things about Nintendo is the way that they're able to incorporate comedic elements into their gameplay, which leads to an overall more enjoyable experience. The Mario franchise is at the middle of this hilarity, and even if it's in subtle ways with limited spoken words, they still found a way to make you laugh. This leads me to the topic of today's video, and one that I've wanted to make for a long time, about the funniest moments in every Mario game. Before I get started in showing you these humorous moments, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet then please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, and I do now have a join button where if you become a member, you can support me in making videos for years to come. The original Super Mario Bros. for the NES has a couple funny moments that I want to talk about, starting with the hilarious thing that happens when you defeat the game's fake Bowsers. When you then reach where the princess is being held captive, it will be revealed that it's been a decoy all along, and that she's in another castle. This is a pretty funny twist, even if it gets a bit repetitive after a while. The other moment that I found hilarious when I saw it growing up was when the Koopas all of a sudden drop into a void for seemingly no reason. This only happens with the green colored Koopas, as the red ones are smart enough to avoid going in the void. In the North American Super Mario Bros. NES sequel, the funniest moment of the game comes at the very end, where there's a huge reveal that it's all been a dream and nothing in the game is real. It's interesting that Nintendo would do this, not only to explain why the game's enemies and bosses seem so out of place, but also because this game isn't technically a Mario game, and is actually a reskin of a Japanese title called Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic, that was used instead of the true sequel, that was deemed too difficult and confusing for Western audiences. The final game of the original series, Super Mario Bros. 3, has a collection of funny moments when you reach each world's castle and find out that the kings have been transformed into random animals. The grassland king was turned into a dog, the desert land a spider, the water land a kappa, the giant land a dinosaur, the sky land a vulture, the ice land a seal, and the pipe land a Venus flytrap. In the GBA versions, these are all changed to more Mario-centric enemies, oddly including DK Jr., and if you beat the game once through, then on the second go-around, you'll see how the game's bosses transform the kings. The first handheld game in the franchise was Super Mario Land, which was released for the Game Boy in 1989. Although the gameplay is extremely limited to the 8-bit nature of the system, Nintendo was still able to include a very funny moment, which is what happens during the final boss battle. Before the Tatanga comes out, you have to fight the Beyond Kinton, who hilariously throws chickens towards you, which for such a serious situation, seems oddly out of place. The next game in the series is Super Mario World, which came out for the SNES, and has one funny moment that I want to highlight. When you beat the game completely and finish all of the special zone levels, the map will change from spring to fall, and many of the enemies will completely transform. Koopas will now appear to be mocking Mario, wearing a mask of the mustachioed main character's face, which is a strange sight, but always made me laugh when I saw them. One funny moment that always stuck out to me from the Lost Levels Mario game, that was released alongside Super Mario All-Stars for the SNES, is when you reach Fantasy World and things start getting a bit strange. That's because three of these levels are underwater themed, even though they are technically above ground, which is definitely a funny sight to see. What's even stranger is that the levels mix enemies, so you'll see Koopas, Lakitus, and Piranha Plants in these strange underwater levels, making things incredibly more difficult. Like the first in the series, Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy doesn't have too many funny moments other than the final battle against Wario, which is just extremely out of place. At the end of the battle against Mario's doppelganger, he appears to turn completely bald and starts to cry, running off screen, never to be seen again in a mainline game in the series. I think it's even weird that he appeared in this game at all, but at least it led to his own spin-off series, Wario Land. The first 3D adventure game in the series was Super Mario 64, that was released on the N64 in 1996, and has a hilarious minigame in the main title menu where you can manipulate Mario's face. Here you can tug and stretch his nose, ears, cheeks, chin, and hat into some very humorous positions which I remember entertaining me and my friends for hours growing up. 
In terms of actual gameplay elements I found funny, there's one situation that happens when you attack a butterfly, and sometimes it can actually turn into a bomb and damage you. This was a very weird enemy that I only learned about years later when I was making a video about the weirdest enemies in every Mario game. The next game in the series is Super Mario Sunshine, which has a few funny moments, but the best has to be in the opening cutscene where Mario becomes enamored over a commercial about seafood? He hilariously becomes hypnotized by the thought of being able to relax and eat on his vacation, that he doesn't even notice the shadow that looks like him in the back of the news report. This is the first time I've seen Mario look this way, and honestly, I kinda hope it's the last. Nintendo will return Mario to 2D platforming with new Super Mario Bros for the DS, that has one really funny enemy that made me laugh growing up in the Balloon Boo. Appearing only in World 4's Ghost House, this giant boo has giant red rosy cheeks and expels air when you aren't looking at him. When looked at, they hilariously stop in their tracks and begin to inhale air until they become massive again. This enemy only ever appears in this specific DS title, and is definitely one of the strangest enemies in the entire series. The funniest moment from the first Super Mario Galaxy game for the Wii is one that I never knew about until researching this video, which is that the game will actually chirp you for collecting zero coins during the purple coin collection challenges. This is actually pretty hard to do, and is more likely needed to be done on purpose for this funny occurrence to happen. When you do complete any of these courses with a total of zero collected, then the Guillermo will hilariously state, You didn't get a single one? Did you do that on purpose? That might impress some, but this old bag of bolts doesn't take kindly to that kind of stunt. Oh wow, oh, oh Nintendo okay, okay. New Super Mario Bros. from the Nintendo Wii has one really funny moment at the beginning of the game where the Koopalings kidnap Peach in a hilarious way. During the game's opening cutscene, which focuses on the members of Mushroom Kingdom gathering for the princess's birthday, the Koopalings are actually hiding inside of her cake waiting for the unsuspecting Peach. When they reveal themselves, Peach gets stunned, and they actually throw the cake onto her, trapping her inside, where they carry it away and kidnap her. This is a much funnier and more interesting way of showing her capture, rather than Bowser just dragging her off screen for the millionth time. In Super Mario Galaxy 2, the Guillermo's are once again the funniest thing about the game, where a specific one in the Chomp Works galaxy is oddly into getting hit repeatedly by the Chomps. Even funnier is that his companion, who originally questioned what the other Guillermo was doing, in a later mission starts doing it himself and hilariously declares, I get it now! Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS has a really cool mechanic, where if you shake the screen on one of the pictures that you collect, then some really comical things will start to happen. My favorite is the one where it looks like the Tower of Goombas are attacking Peach, which is pretty funny as the top one looks like it wants to bite her. This was a really good way for Nintendo to show off what the system's 3D capabilities could do, and I honestly think it turned out pretty good. Although I didn't really find that there are any funny moments in New Super Mario Bros. 2, I did enjoy the names Nintendo gave the game's DLC packs. These are the Nerve Wreck and Impossible packs that were definitely released in response to fans saying that the game was way too easy. I'm glad that Nintendo can poke a bit of fun at themselves, as they must have known that part of the fanbase was not happy with the gameplay in New Super Mario Bros. 2. The next game we're going to look at is New Super Mario Bros. from the Nintendo Wii U, that has a final cutscene that made me laugh a lot when I first saw it. At the end of the game, Kamek turns Bowser huge, and once you defeat this giant version, he tries to escape in his airship. This doesn't work as he's so enormous that he ends up bringing the ship down. Hilariously, they now have to use Bowser Jr.'s clown car, with all the game's bosses hanging out the side, barely able to escape. In Super Mario 3D World, the funniest moment comes in the form of a power-up that allows you to become one of Mario's sworn enemies, the Goomba. This is found in the Sunshine Seaside level, and is a mask Mario wears that tricks every other Goomba into thinking that he is one of them. This is actually hilarious, as it's so obvious it's Mario wearing a mask, but the enemies are so dumb that they don't give you a second thought. Even funnier is that Mario starts to make Goomba noises when he moves, which is an amazing added touch. Yeah. 
Super Mario Odyssey has so many funny moments that I might even make an entirely separate video on the subject, but the one I do want to talk about in this video is the game's closing cutscene. Once Mario saves the day by capturing Bowser and escaping with Peach from the crumbling wedding hall, you fight with the King Koopa for Peach's love. In the end, Peach decides that she doesn't want either character and ditches both of them by leaving in the Odyssey. This is a twist from the usual Mario getting the princess in the end, and sort of sours him as he just went on an insane adventure to save her, and it seems like she doesn't even care. The most recent game in the series, Bowser's Fury, has one funny moment at the end of the final boss battle. Here to defeat the King Koopa, you need to power up Plessy until she becomes Giga Size, so you can literally squish Bowser to defeat him. This game is so out of place when compared to the other games in the franchise, and this is exemplified in this game's weird ending. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course subscribe to my channel. Also, I do have an Instagram at CopycatGamer, so go give that a follow. There I post items from my collection, and clips that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!